right, so we all know that uh, concept and design are the crucial but uh, fun and free front end of any 3D project. And a lot of uh, modelers and designers prefer to do that design phase with 2D drawing tools, whether they be digital or traditional, pencil and paper or what have you. Uh, I prefer to do it with a 3D tool, uh, Grobato. And it's possible with Grobato because Grobato's modeling consists of true geometric primitives. Uh, the mesh only comes along later. You can make a mesh at any point during the process. It's uh, fully automated. But the fact that you're working with primitives allows you to freely uh, alter and change and, and reform your model. And uh, here in this example, the model I did for one of the models I did for the Luxology spaceship asset design competition. Um, the central design feature is this fan of ellipsoids, actually they're what we call hyperods, in this case taking the form of an elongated ellipsoid with its ends clipped or capped. And uh, that's, a, that's a, a reasonably nice form just as it is, but it certainly gets more interesting when we throw in a couple of trim objects as you see here. There there's a, we have a, uh, another hyperod, in this case it's like an hourglass that's tilted on its side, so we're looking down from what would normally be the top of the uh, hourglass. It's uh, very short and has a kind of a thick waist and that uh, creates that hole and you see I'm free to move that that hole around and to change the uh, length of the hourglass or the hyperod and, and uh, there, thereby uh, affect the steepness of the cut into those uh, ellipsoids. And by doing so you can get a lot of variation in the design. Remember that this all gets converted into a unified mesh. Uh, parts of it can be unified, parts of it can be kept separate, but uh, certainly in the case of this central form uh, on end, and as you see all the variants here, any of those could be uh, easily and automatically meshed. There's some workspace shots and we're gonna uh, run through uh, a little capture of me playing around and, and uh, landing on some of those variants uh, just through the process of interacting and playing with the Boolean elements that uh, comprise that central form. This is uh, just seems very natural to, to me that uh, if you're designing a three-dimensional thing, to use a three-dimensional tool for that uh, design phase of the project uh, just seems uh, like the way to go. Again, it's only possible when you have a tool that uh, does not restrict or enforce uh, morphology. That's what happens when you start building a mesh. Once you commit to a certain morphology in a mesh, um, you pretty much have to stick with it. I mesh, meshes are wonderfully flexible things. Uh, they have a great deal of flexibility that solid primitives like this don't. But in that particular aspect, the ability to kind of completely uh, reform and redesign something, it makes sense to hold off on generating the mesh until you've hit upon that design that really works for you. Here's a mesh that was grabbed at some point during my play with those forms. And we'll just let this run for a while and you can see how I'm at, uh, manipulating just about every aspect of this Boolean cluster, as we call them. Here I'm changing the primaries, making them very thick at one end there. Most of that thick stuff is cut off, but it significantly changes the overall form. Of course you're free to change any of these elements any way you like. You can scale and move them all together, uh, edit the shapes of individual primitive elements, move, rotate, scale, and change the parameters of the trim objects. And you can do things far more radical than anything you see me doing here. You could be throwing in new primitives, throwing in new trims, throwing out the whole cluster and building something new and tossing it in there. One of the crucial aspects of good design is simply recognizing it when it occurs, knowing it when you see it. And that isn't possible, or uh, the range of it, the, 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 the potential of it is limited if you don't have the freedom to simply explore. You won't, you won't ever uh, be able to know it when you see it if you never see it. Once you do find it with Grobato, 
it's an easy thing to automatically generate a mesh, take it into Moto or another polygonal editing app, and see how things work for you. And if you don't like it, you can go back and uh, tweak it and try again. If you're like me, you, you've noticed that quite often the difference between something that really works and something that doesn't quite work can be a, a subtle adjustment. As I was playing with this one here, I noticed that uh, I liked the form a lot, but it seemed out of balance, out of scale with the rest of the model. So I simply selected everything, the entire Boolean cluster, rescaled and repositioned it, and got something that I felt worked better. So give it a try. Uh, grab Roboto, uh, grab the trial version, it's fully functional. Grab the free Roboto Moto Toolkit, which is available on our site, and see how it works for you. Thanks for watching.